I started sewing when I was eight and went on to become a home ec teacher. I loved teaching, starting where I grew up outside of Albany, then moving to southern Maine in 86 and teaching in a large rural district. Coming from a teaching family, I had planned to always be a teacher. I thought I'd supplement my teaching income by writing craft pa patterns under the business name Heart and Sew. In the early 90s, I designed a king and queen of hearts craft pattern to sell. I sold enough of the pattern to pay for itself and make a tiny little bit of money, but it turned out that I had only one pattern in me, and I needed to find another idea for supplementing my income. Fortunately, I've always been comfortable with men without resorting to flirting, probably because I grew up as the only girl among four brothers. We're all along the back row in the picture. In the early 90s, there were mostly men on my Christmas list. My husband, father, brothers, stepsons, father-in-law, nephews. Christmas shopping was a challenge. My husband, John, was a physics teacher, and he wore neckties to school. And I made him a bowling ball tie for a pendulum demonstration that he did, as well as some holiday-themed ties. At the time, I'd shop at craft fairs looking for gifts for my men, and choices were limited to a $200 lamp or a $2 bookmark. Aha, there was a void in the craft fair market that I could fill with ties. I did my very first craft fair in 93. I used an office divider covered in shirt fabric, flopped ties over it, and a deck table with a market umbrella with ties lying on the table. I had a 15-minute setup and breakdown, and I went home that day with $1,200 and knew that I had the germ of a business idea. Several craft fair customers requested bow ties, and I started offering those as well. I realized that I could sell bow ties and suspenders by mail order if I sent out fabric swatches and an order form. With each order form, I included 35 to 40 samples of fabric. As you can imagine, the mailings were really time consuming and really expensive. Shortly after I started selling by mail order, when my stepson was in middle school, he said, you know, there's this thing called the internet. You could buy a URL with bow tie in it. And I said, what's, what's a URL? I already have an email address. And, he said, and then I said, I, I don't know, Dan. It's $35. But on his great advice, I bought bowtie.com, and Dan now has his PhD. <laughs> Meanwhile, I continued doing craft fairs, some as far away as the DC area. My booth got more professional, expensive, and time consuming to set up and break down. I also had to expand to include some things other than ties, because tie sales were so slow. In addition to building the house, after years of trying and lots of medical involvement, I had a baby when I was 40. I kept doing the business and paying it much less attention. My husband continued teaching and providing the reliable income and the all-important health insurance, but he was getting close to retirement. On the horizon, I saw the need for a secure income and health insurance looming. I set my sights on sonography or radiation therapy, the best bangs for the community college buck. I took A&P and a nursing course as prerequisites, did well, but did not enjoy it at all. I am not designed to be in the healthcare profession. So we had to decide, spend money to qualify for a job I didn't want or invest in revamping the website. The name Heart and So had to go and Bowtie.com became the business identity. It so clearly com com communicates what I do. It looks so simple, but John and I spent many, many hours developing the new logo. I hired a design firm in South Portland and Roy got really excited. On my original website, I showed pictures of fabrics available to be made into ties. The customers would choose the fabric and I then made the tie. However, not everyone can translate fabric into what will make a nice tie. On the new site, I make each tie before listing it. John taught himself to use the big Nikon in Photoshop. He takes the pictures and runs them all through Photoshop so they're consistent. My original site, designed in 94 for free by a friend, was not an e-commerce site. It was an antique by the time it was redesigned 20 years later. Customers had to print out an order form and send me a check in the mail. The new site allows for online ordering and buyers to make customized choices. The baby girl who was born in 2002 is now in charge of gift card production. For customers ordering gifts, like a florist, I will include a card with their handwritten sentiment. If I even suspect an order is going to become a gift, I include a blank gift card in a gift box with the order when I ship it out. At the first, uh, I'm sorry, at the 2013 Yarmouth Clam Festival, a customer asked if I could do a specific location on a bow tie. I suspected I could, wasn't really sure, but said a firm and confident yes. And I'm really happy I did because her wedding was then featured in Maine Magazine's wedding issue of 2015, and those were my first location ties. 
Another bride wanted neckties for her Booth Bay Harbor wedding. These ties are from a single nautical chart. When the groomsmen line up from west to east, they recreate the entire chart. <laughs> the bow tie features the couple's favorite spot in, in the harbor, Spruce Point. The next bow tie is one single tie that features two different locations depending upon how it's tied. It was for a doctor who's doing his residency in Chapel Hill. He bought a house in Carborough, which is at the very center that forms the middle of the bow. He grew up on one of the streets that's in the lower left hand side of the New Jersey bow tie. I can get really specific with location. This tie was ordered by a woman for her husband as a second anniversary gift. She wanted to highlight four locations that were important to their relationship on a tie. On the back is the key to what the different colored hearts represent. When a friend posted her son's artwork, the chest king, the chess king <laughs> on Facebook, I couldn't stop thinking about it because I loved the art itself and knew it would make a great tie. I had to up my Photoshop game to figure out how to make it work. And with the artist's permission, my friend had the piece scanned and I made it work as both a necktie and a bow tie. A retiring Coast Guard officer wanted to put his ship on a bow tie for his 13-year-old son. It ties so that the words right across the center Coast Guard that are straddled by the middle uh, line up and cl read clearly every time it's tied. Had you asked me when I was teaching if I had a creative entrepreneurial bone in my body, <laughs> I would have laughed and responded with an emphatic no, but I would have been wrong. <laughs>